what is up guys and of course welcome to another Mount Moon Battle Association battle this time against Los Angeles Lucario's or John and yeah this team that I'm facing was a very, very different team than I predicted the reason I say this is because he has Politoed and Swampert in his team and you know to be fair that is disgusting uh, so <laughs> having that in mind I was pretty sure I was gonna see those two, even Beatik to some extent, because Beatik does somewhat well against my team. If it outspeeds me, which with Rain it can actually do. Uh, we don't see that, which means that both my Tangrove and Jellicent are kinda wasted. Now Jellicent has some role here with of course the likes of Infernic being a part of his team, which he could potentially wall. Same thing with Sumeril, I can deal with Infernum just like that, it doesn't necessarily have a big threat for my team. And outside of that, it looks like Metagross is going to have a fun time here. Uh, Metagross, of course, with uh, Meteor Mash, Ice Punch, Earthquake, and Bullet Punch. Bullet Punch was there in case his card was Scarfed. They didn't see the necessary of having a Grass Nut for his Swampert, since I have Moss, he can deal with it properly. And the Ladias is Scarfed and outspeed Infernape. And then I have a Life Orb, uh, Mammoth Swine with Freeze Try, which is called the Ex-Wife. Thank you, Marcus. <laughs> So right, then Tangrove is of course uh, Assault Vest, regular set. Uh, so without any chance here, I really was predicting, you know, something that could potentially set up rocks. So Cradle was the one I was thinking was going to lead it. And I was thinking basically, alright, so I'll leave with Metagross and I should be able to get some momentum out of that. And even one in Kyo to Cradle if it decides to end. So with all that said, let's go. So yeah, from the get-go here, he is going to lead off with Diddy Kong in Infernape. And I was thinking, ah oh, shit. Damn it. Now, I can take a Flare Blitz if I so desire, but you know, it's too early for me. Jellicent or even Assumeril were both safe switch ins. So I decided to go to use the form of the Assumeril basically to take a potential U turn if it goes to that, which it does. And that's alright. Uh, we're not Assault Vested, actually. Like I said, there, we do believe we are banded for this specific game. And uh, he's gonna go to Guard War, and all I was thinking, alright, Thunderbolt, Energy Ball do not want to KO us, and we can go for a knockoff in return. Knockoff, of course, the. Potential Scarf, which could be troublesome for the game. Now, he goes for Energy Ball, and it, it one-shots me. And I was like, oh shit, that, that is, that, that motherfucker is Specs. That, <laughs> damn it, that is not good. That means Infernape now is extremely dangerous for us. Now, luckily here, Metagross will be able to outspeed it. Actually, I don't know if it do that. Yes, yes it does. If, it, if it's timid, then sure, but I don't think so. So anyway, I'm just going for Meteor Mash, knowing it's very likely that the Spirit Tomb is going to come in. And uh, if it is a defensive Spirit Tomb, I should still be able to do it, kill it. Um, it should do roughly around 50%, a bit over even, even if I am jolly. So it goes for the Meteor Mash, and it does a bit over. So I think, alright, it is the set I was barely looking at. And uh, even with the left doors, it's not going to save him. The only thing I could save is a Misty Meteor Mash. With luckily I wanted to, or luckily I didn't do, and I get the attack race there, which means that I can't now overpredict against the Infernape, he's gonna go for a Flare Blitz. And as I said earlier, I can still take it if I so desire, but I don't because I still have safe switching. So, Jellicent or the Necromedusa is gonna come in, and he goes for Flare Blitz, and it doesn't do, like, anything. Uh, I do believe that is almost 50 HP, so it's quite alright, it is definitely quite alright. Uh, so all I can do here is go for Will-O-Wisp and pretty much, you know, nerf something. And of course Cradle is gonna come in and there's really nothing to it. I could have overpredicted there, or not over I could have pulled a double there, but there was really no reason to. Plus Rocks really isn't turning my team all that much. So all I'm gonna do now is bring back, of course, the Metagross. Because, let's face it, he has nothing that can take a hit from Metagross. Uh, it really is a very, very punishing mon. Uh, I could predict that now, of course, he's gonna bring something that can resist it, but Meteor Mash still does a lot of damage. Even if I went from Earthquake hitting anything else, uh, I still kind of wanted to hope that he wanted to stay in and kind of sack it, so I went for Meteor Mash and not taking that risk as it goes for Yiroshi. Now this is the uh, shiny Yiroshi, which could possibly have the Moonblast, maybe. I don't really care, uh, because I get a crit here, and the Earthquake is now enough to KO it. Which it would have been anyway, actually, now I think about it. But then again, you know, he could have been Scarf with Arnett. That would have been annoying, it would have killed me, but it would have definitely been annoying. So yeah, we just get that out of the way. And now, I'm gonna, since I don't have an attack raise, I know he's not going to go for U-turn, and I'm just going to go for Meteor Mash. 
Uh, after this U-turn, I can actually still take a Flare Blitz, which is kind of nice, um, since we actually know that he's Jolly Scarf and not uh, Adamant Scarf. Had it been Adamant Scarf, you had a possibility to carry me from this range. Uh, so I'm just going for Meteor Mash and Bop the Cradle -y. So we got, at this point, you know, Metagross is having, you know, just a feast on these mons, basically. There is really nothing they can take it on. Uh, so he goes back to Diddy Kong, and all I was thinking here is, alright, fair enough. Um, I could go for the kill, sure. Or I could just keep playing the game. I'm gonna decide to keep playing the game, bring in Necromedusa. Uh, and the Stealth Rock definitely pushes down a little bit as it goes through the Blitz. Now, I could have gone here, of course, for a recover. That actually, recover would have been nice. But at the same time, um, he's gonna bring Guard War. I want the damage on the Guard War. I really want the damage on the Guard War. And uh, knowing that it's specs and all, I know that every damage can count. So I'm just gonna go for safe Shadow Ball. Because, let's face it, I'm not gonna be able to take a Specs, or I could take a Specs Energy Ball from full HP, but it's not a risk I want to take. So, Shadow Ball does around 50%, and that is great for being, you know, obviously unboosted. So now I'm gonna bring Tangrove, just see what he locks himself into, and then switch into something safer. Because, it, you know, everything will do a lot of damage. Moonblast does actually 3 thirds. Uh, so it goes for Psychic, that's alright, and I see the damage, I was like, oh shit, this is hurting, this is hurting so badly. But anyway, now I know he's logged into that, so I'm just going to go to Safira, which of course is a Scarf, the variant of Latios. I could have gone for, of course, Metagross, but at the same time, why would I? Like, I don't really want to risk any more damage on Metagross. I'd want him to be able to take a Flare Blitz. Um, so right, get a special defense drop, but it's where it is. I go for Shadow Ball, that's easily going to kill it. Um, and also, now it's going to bring, of course, Dragonite. And I have two options here. I either go for damage, break the Marvel scale, and... Um, hope that he doesn't Dragon Dance, basically, or hope that he Dragon Dance. Uh, luckily, I should say, I break the Marvel's good, right? So that's that's awesome, but it goes directly for Outrage, which have me believe that it's probably a Bandit set. Uh, it's either Bandit or, you know, obviously, could be Scarfed and I'm just out speeding. But, yeah, uh, maybe broke that in vain since I am Scarfed after all, like I said there, but at the same time, I can just bring the ex-wife, and since it's locked into Outrage, I can just go for an eye shot. And there is really nothing to it, and um, yeah, at this point he only has Infernape left, and I have a few options how I want to play the game, uh, but I decided to take a different route here, so he's going to bring a course the last month, which is the Infernape, and I'm just going to fry short, basically just going to push him down a little bit, uh, and I'm pushing well beyond that mighty area where Bullet Punch could potentially kill him, uh, I do get a crit here, which is somewhat unfortunate actually for him, as he goes for Flare Blitz. Now here's the thing, uh, due to my Jellicent being the range of HP it is, I actually have, um, I do believe that was a roll about just above 10% to actually be killed by a Flare Blitz uh, after all, so I was thinking, you know, that's a risk I can take, so I'm just gonna try to recover stall him, because the max damage output is 68 from the Flare Blitz. Um, so, um, you know, that happened, uh, he actually get, you know, definitely a maximum roll here and does KO the Jellicent, which is okay, but at the same time, you know, that kind of ruined my plan, which was to recover, stall him to death. So I'm just going to bring Tangrove here and just wrap up the game. I could have gone to Metagross and just go for a Bullet Punch, wrap it up, but really, really, really wanted to recall kill him. So that is exactly what we're going for. So Tangrove, good job, buddy. And uh, the Burnip is going to fall, and we do win this game 1-0 against, of course, the Los Angeles, Lucario, or John. And this was a very, very cool game, because like I said, there. This was not the team I was prepping for, so I'm generally impressed the way he played this game because it definitely pushed me in the corner, even though I won eventually, and I mean eventually. So, alright, uh, the afterpause, of course. Um, yeah, you know, like I said in the beginning, I really didn't see this this specific team coming. Uh, not seeing Swamp Bird or Politoed had me fruit off a bit because I have Mon specifically built for them. Uh, and of course, you know, Specs Gardevoir hurting my Sumeril so hard in the beginning. It really nasty. Like, I really, really, I should have just switched in Tangro playing it safe there. I didn't do that, and I think that really, really knocked me back a lot. Uh, but outside of that, I think John plays a very, very good game. Now, I am in control, of course, mid game. The early game was definitely his. And while it is a 1 0, it's a very, very controlled 1 0 because. I could have just gone for Bullet Punch with Metagross and that would have wrapped up the game, but like I said, I really want to recover Stalling with Jelly Scent. I had the HP to pull that off, but sometimes you're unlucky, but as I said, due to the amount of HP he was in, I still had a game, well, pretty much in my hand, there was really nothing I could have 
done outside of that. So, um, like I said, it's a very, very controlled 1-0. And uh, to be honest, I think John plays a very nice game. And I, I can't really stress it enough. He plays smart, he forces me down. As, he lo as I lost Asumriel, it burned to become extremely dangerous. And it was basically a game of can I play smart enough to not get swept by it. And I pulled it off, but it definitely looked very shaky from my at least. So with that said, guys, well, of course, as always, thank you for watching. Uh, a quick update, you know, there won't be as many uploads next week due to my vacation, but I'm always active on Twitter. So if you want to talk with me, chef with me there. And I think the last upload will be, or the next upload will be next week, when, of course, the semi-final against Riss in the TBU. And that's going to be interesting. So with all this said, guys, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next week. Until then, take care.